Phoebe, that grass is as tall as you are. You look like a creepy tiger coming through the bushes. Except you're a donkey. What's up guys it's daniel from arms family homestead and uh talk about a beautiful day but mowing season is upon us and while weston did do all the mowing around the yard i hooked up the uh Machio flail mower on the back of this brand new tym tractor and i'm still learning how to fine tune this flail mower i really don't think that the the roller on the back is low enough it just doesn't seem to roll across the ground like it should just yet so i need to do some fine tuning with that and i've only used it a couple times but if you're interested in flail mowers uh Machio seems to make a really great product and uh you can check them out on Machio's website or agfolks.com i've got a link in the description box if you want to check them out there but today's not about the flail mower necessarily i just needed to get a little bit of mowing done on the side of the driveway because today i need that strip that straight line to put up some electric fence some electric hot wire fence because we've got a lot of grass in the timber up here that we're not utilizing so as you guys know dj's alpacas and donkeys are basically in this back pasture behind our house and uh they're already kind of staying ahead of the grass it's it's green in there there's still a lot of grass to be eaten but they're kind of staying ahead of it and we have this area along the driveway so the driveway you saw me mowing runs right across there and there's probably another i don't know 200 yards before our driveway makes a sharp curve but i thought why not fence in just temporary hot wire fence all of this and uh let the donkeys and alpacas graze on this and kind of bring the hot wire down around that curve across the side of the yard and bring them through that gate right there now it's just like i said temporary won't be here forever but this grass is uh probably a good two feet tall and this area of timber in here i know timber is not gonna be the most productive pasture but we've done a controlled burn on this just about every year for the last seven or eight years and it really does produce a lot of a lot of grass in there so might as well set it up and take advantage of it and uh, give some of these other pastures a break, hopefully. Now, I've used um, some hot wire fences in the past, but never since we've had alpacas and donkeys. Horses do really well on a hot wire, so I figure the donkeys probably won't be much different than a horse. I'm not sure about the alpacas. It's a good thing we sheared them because when they have fleece that's this thick, if they brush up against it, it's not going to shock them. But uh, it's not a super high intensity shock it's just enough to go oh wait don't cross that line so what we'll probably do is set up a two wire hot wire with just temporary posts across and then go up around that curve back down the driveway and tie it into that corner over there and uh 
hopefully it works. Stevie, you want some more grass to graze on? Hmm? Okay, so what we're gonna do, <laughs> it's just temporary. I don't think these guys are gonna stay here forever, but uh, as many as we can, we're just gonna go put insulators on the tree and kind of work our way around. And then we'll use some uh, temporary fiberglass post in between, because obviously that's too far. So on to the next run. Yes, sir. Look out, Earl. the wire in there then drop that in place and then when we stretch it this can go back and forth and it'll hold it in place hopefully right yeah hopefully Find this one, go that way. This one, next one. Just take it all the way to the corner, see if it, see if it'll make it. Hmm? Just take it all the way to the corner, and we'll see if it'll make it. We're going back now. Nope. Actually, you do have to go back, all the way back around. <laughs> yeah, just make sure it's down there it looks decently tight. All right, now you can take off the other way. Ah, tied the wrong one. I just grabbed the end laying there. <laughs> Uh. All right, cuz. Mm -hmm. Take off. Unwrap it around your rod. I'll come behind you and screw in all the rest of the insulators. Right. As you go, you may kind of pull it tight a little bit. So you don't get a mile of slack behind you. You know what I mean? Well, that figures. Make it all the way, and we're like 40 feet short on poly tape. I had two rolls, and I thought I had just the right amount. So I don't have any more poly tape here, and I'm not going to go spend another $50, $60 on a roll of this poly tape. And this isn't ideal, but I'm just going to uh, splice it with a short piece of poly wire. And uh, same concept. It's got electrical current going through tiny little wires but splicing these two products together is not recommended but sometimes you just got to do things the western way every day you ain't got to work it ain't got to be right it's just got to work yep. right yep. okay yep. i don't know who knotted it all up and got it all messed up but it wasn't that it, it's whatever just just uh should be plenty to get us <laughs> Better be. <laughs> we'll be splicing it with shoelaces if that's not enough. You good? It looked like you had a strip. Well, we, that's how short that little bit right there is where we ran out of poly tape
Go ten steps, ten yards from here. Let's just see where you're at. Ooh, he takes big yard steps. Are you in between me and that tree, or do you need to go a little farther to be in the middle? Right there's probably not too bad. Only problem, oh, snapped the foot pedal off of it. Only problem with these little posts is I didn't really want the wire this high, but you don't get many options. You get pretty much where it's at. So we may have to raise this one here. But to yep. me, that's too high. Yeah. We'll see. We got that in the ground so crooked anyway. Hmm. It wasn't that me. I didn't even put it up against the fence. Broski. Um, we definitely want to take the post to the wire, not the wire to the post. The posts are too flimsy. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You put it on the top one? Yeah. It's not exactly the height I prefer, right. but we'll see if Phoebe will stick her nose to it. I bet she will. I'm not sure if our spacing is going to be great for uh, for the little donkeys. That's a kind of a big opening there, but if we can get them to come out here and just touch it once or twice, they'll learn to respect it. Weston said he was going to touch it first. No, he didn't. All right. Our two wire fence is all up, all the way around, all tied in. Now we just need our energizer so we can get it hot and test it and make sure that it's uh got enough volts to send them a message and then donkeys will have a lot more grass all right let's turn our uh, premier one we got a solar charging um fence charger here and uh Obviously, we're in the shade, so if it doesn't uh, hold a charge well enough, doesn't get enough sunlight to hold the charge for us. I've always got electricity right over there, so we can run the charger and hook it in directly into the electrical. You hear it clicking. Green light. That means our battery's good. Okay, I need a tester. Get Earl. I need a tester. Good thing I've got a tester. I don't, I don't like them. Okay. I'll, I'll grab the fence and I'll grab you. No. You don't have to touch the fence. No. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Full power. She's a clicking away. Let's see if mom wants to turn her donkeys out. Go get her. I think there's a woman in here. Somebody. This place is cluttered. There's not it enough is. space. It is. It's a little overwhelming. So, uh, I've been working hard on a hot wire fence for your donkeys and alpacas. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if it's going to work. I, I think it's going to work. Think? I know it's hot. <laughs> is it It might have shocked me on accident. Well, I always miss that when well, that happens. Technically, the fence didn't shock me. No, so here's what happened. I said, we got to get everything all hooked up. And I grabbed a hold of one of the plastic alligator clips. They're plastic. It should not shock you through that. I had my knees on the ground. I was working on everything. And I was going to clip it to the fence. Did and you see? I laughed. Yeah. It's not on video. It never happened. <laughs> Sucks. Oh, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Hey, it. Step one. Yeah. Turn off the fence charger. Was this the one at the garden? It's a different one, but oh. the same thing. Okay. But if you don't turn off the fence charger, you'll, you'll pay the price. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, you Have get to let your... Have touched it yet? No, not yet. Sure uh, you get to release the donkeys. I don't even know where they're at. They're not even up here. They'll come up here. Here a donk, there a donk, everywhere a donk, donk. Uh, Let's go, hey, girls. I got to go turn on the fence. Oh, you better hurry up.
Those well, Wes, our, our, oh, our top oh. wire might be a little too high. Maybe we should have measured a donkey. <laughs> Hopefully they don't walk right through that. I think we're done. Oh, oh. Oh, Phoebe about got zapped. I bet they're going to figure out real quick if they don't want to go through it. Yeah, she's like a smoker. Yeah. Always got that cigarette hanging out her mouth. Come on, girls. Somebody's got a volunteer. Oh, got close. oh, that was so close. Phoebe, we need a volunteer. Ow. She literally licked the plastic handle. <laughs> no, not yet. Phoebe, I need you to tell me if it's going to work on you. Oh man, Jesse was the first one. So, Wes, I think we need to lower that top wire on all these posts right here because it's a it's above the little donkey's back. What happened, Jesse? Did Mom bite you with that wire? Hmm. Phoebe, she was sniffing the post. Well, what do you guys think? Some new uncharted territory. Taking steps where no donkey has ever taken a step. Well, at least not in my lifetime. Oh, Steve. Steve sees them. Steve thinks the ladies are coming to visit him. Jesse sees him too. It's like a stampede. Everybody's inching closer. Um, yeah, that top wire is definitely, definitely too tall for the donkeys. But it's good height for alpacas. It hit, like most of the alpacas, I feel like it would hit them like right at the base of their neck yeah. if they pushed against it. So we shall see. But they've got a lot of green grass in there. Reba, what are you doing? Fair, take a couple steps back. No? Okay. This is like torture for Steve. They're really not that close, you know. I mean, there's still a good 30 yards in between the pasture where Steve is and this hot wire. So um, if it was the other way around, it definitely would not work because Steve would probably run right through this to get to the girls. Would you agree? I didn't hear you. I said if it was the other way around, I don't think that would hold Steve in. Nope. Because he'd run right through it the way he's pacing the fence over there. But the girls, nah, they're easygoers. Uh-oh. Reba? We got another fence post sniffer. Jesse! Oh, Jesse got it again. Dang it. Why's it always got to be poor Jesse? Uh oh. Back up, Jess. Back up. Well, 
Your little donkey got out. First catastrophe. Yeah. Well, it worked. It zapped her on the nose two different times. Dadgummit. Just pick her up and bring her back. <laughs> Dadgummit. You get to put her on the halter and bring her back. I know that works out well for you. We'll just pick her up. Well, Jesse's back in. We're going to try. Round two, right now she's playing king of the hill. <laughs> she's not the biggest donkey in the place, but when she's on top of a hill, she's the tallest. And they're exploring, looking for the perimeter. And they've made it over to this edge. We'll see what they do. See if we get any reaction out of the fence. Here comes Jesse again. Don't try it, Phoebe. Look at them. They are literally just checking the perimeter of that fence, you know what? Yeah. Clearly we've got some adjustments to make and some fine tuning to do. Um, Jesse got shocked by the fence when she first walked in. She got shocked by the fence like 30 seconds before she got out and then she just pushed against it i think when it when it shocked her you know that one wire was hitting her in her front legs and it shocked her and she just jumped through the fence but we got her back in and she hasn't tried to get out again so we'll see the donkeys are all checking the perimeter the alpacas are just chilling they're not doing anything easy baby Passing a little gas with those bucks. Woo! -hoo. You could tell that Phoebe right there was actually respecting the fence because she bucked and ran sideways and she could have just gone right through it real easy. But she had a little respect for it. So she might have gotten zapped at some point. Here come the lazy donkey poodles. They're just, uh, whoa, Fallon. Donkey's got a little gas today. They sound like Weston walking around out here. Hey, Reba, you're going to have an issue here though, because Reba has a lot of fleece on her. She didn't get sheared. So until she sticks her nose to it, that, that fence is never really going to pop her. But let's say Reba does get out. She's not going to go anywhere. As long as her mom and the other alpacas are still here close by, she'll just go right back in. So I'm not too concerned about her. Really not even concerned about the rest of them, honestly. They'll, if they get out, they'll come back. They're not really going to go anywhere. But obviously nobody wants their livestock out. And we don't want them up in the front yard eating flowers and plants and stuff there. So my goal or my plan, I guess really for this big hot wire it's probably maybe two acres something like that that we fenced in today and i really don't plan to just leave them out here all the time so what i'll do is turn them out in the mornings you know after we get back from the gym or whatever when we're going to be around turn them out and let them graze in here and then lock them up at night and when we're not home if we're going to be gone for several hours or something lock them up because even if they do get out of here they're not going to go far they're still going to be on our property and we've got you know big um, automatic closing gates at the you know the exit to our property so they're not going to go anywhere the problem is is if the donkeys get out they'll eat every plant and flower in our flower beds so uh, that wouldn't be good but we'll just turn them out while we're home and let them have all this extra green grass to graze until they get it grazed down and then uh, we may move a hot wire somewhere else i don't know we'll see too easy for her to get out yeah it is yeah, so I think just exactly what she did right there proves why we need to take this top wire loose and put it in the second gap so that we have, you know, just about a foot gap. Huh, Reba? Because even for her, you can see she's, I mean, her whole body fits in between the two wires pretty easy. And uh, 
I'm not worried about the alpacas going over the top wire by any means. But, I mean, there's just not much holding her there. Yeah, see, I knew Reba would get out. It was too easy for her. So I think we need to move the top wire down to there, and that'll prevent a little bit of what just happened. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal for her. She's just got so much hair on her, you can't stop her. You can get through it. The fence is off, I think. I'm pretty sure. It's off. Yeah, just pop it out of that one and we'll lower it down to the next. Here, just do it on that side. Yeah, and that way, I know it's kind of low to the ground, but huh, our animals are pretty low to the ground. But I think that'll work a lot better when they brush up against it. They won't give such a gap, like you just saw Reba go through it, which Reba's back in now, by the way. Put it down to the second one. Yeah, I like that spacing a lot better. Yeah. All right, girls. We got all the fence posts adjusted, got all the wires adjusted on the post. Got a few little things we need to watch for and make sure they don't learn to, how to get out. But I think if we can keep the fence hot, they'll uh, they'll learn to respect it pretty quick. And like I said, I've never kept alpacas in a in this type of a hot wire. I've never kept alpacas in any kind of hot wire. But I know Premier One sells a lot of electric fence, hot wire, whatever you want to call it, for specifically for alpacas and llamas and stuff. I've seen it on their website, but it's more of a net fence, kind of like their, uh, like the fence I've had around my garden or their electric poultry netting. But man, it would be, uh, it'd be expensive to do this whole, you know, two acres around this in a net type fence. So we'll let them graze. I think as long as they've got plenty of grass, they should respect this hot wire and should stay in it. Huh, Phoebe? Phoebe, that grass is as tall as you are. You look like a creepy tiger coming through the bushes. Except you're a donkey. Right? right. Make sure you help today. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Come Farah, my pretty girl. You gonna come kiss the camera? I guess so. So when I first got this, this new uh, TYM 5835, I told you guys a little bit about it. And one of the things was, it doesn't really have a true third function valve, but that doesn't mean we can't use our grapple, our hydraulic grapple on the front of the tractor. Now I will say this being a shuttle shift, I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of loader work with the shuttle shift. I really like the loader work on a hydrostatic. This just got two pedals for forward and reverse, but nonetheless, it'll still work. So this doesn't have a true third function valve. It's basically got a diverter kit. So all this, all this bunch of valves and stuff is a diverter that's just tapped into the lines over here. And when I first got it, I asked you guys if anybody knew why it only had one button for the third function. And typically you'll have an open and a close. So basically what that diverter valve does, I've learned since then from some of you guys and just from research on the internet, basically you have to hold down that diverter button and then use the curl function to open and close the grapple. Now, this is the first time I've put the, the grapple on the front of the tractor, never even tried it out. So I'm just gonna see if it'll even work first. Well, it definitely functions like it's supposed to. It's gonna take a little bit of getting used to because I'm, you know, I'm so used to being able to curl the bucket and open the grapple or curl the bucket and close the grapple so that you can get over something and, you know, pick up a whole brush pile. So it'll take a little bit of playing. We'll call it playing with this to make sure it's 
it's what I like, but it is functional. It works great. You know, I, I don't can't really say anything good, bad, or ugly about it. It is just a different system than what I'm used to. But anyways, just wanted to show you guys that. You think I need your help, Gemma? Welcome home from school. Hey. Do you always have red lips like that or just when you kiss the girls? Uh, uh, just when I get tiger's blood, snow cone. Snow cone, okay, that makes sense. Well, kids are home from school. DJ got back. I see some packages up there. Got a few other things to do. So I'm gonna shut this down for the day, but. Steve thanks anyways that grapple on that diverter kit's gonna take a little getting used to it does work but it's just not the system that I'm used to using and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it but it's different so I really like this tractor though do you I do you I, do I'm, I can tell when you like something <laughs> why because I talk about it a lot yeah well and the good news is I set up a hot wire for the donkeys today. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. And nobody's out. They've been in for several hours, and they're all staying in. Yeah, I was thinking, like, if they realized it, they could just go right under it. They don't like to get shocked, and neither do I. Hey. Maybe you should go up there and grab a hold of it and let me know if it's I'm, working. I'm good. Honestly, I think I'm going to pass. All right. So I'll close the gate up for tonight, and uh, we'll try again tomorrow. Everybody stayed in. The hot wire seemed to be working flawlessly after uh, a few slight issues this morning. But we're all good now. Phoebe never got out. That was the one I was afraid was going to escape. But Phoebe did good. Huh. So, anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Huh, Phoebes.